Well, great job on your work on module two, personal property. Actually, it's one of my, one of the chapters I like in the course. I love all the chapters, really. I mean, the material. I've been selling real estate since 1978 at the age of 18. <laughs> you can do the math now. But personal property, you may see two or three questions on the exam from this specific chapter. And bill of sale is one of them. How do you transfer personal property? You always use a bill of sale. So you want to make sure that you're, you're familiar with bill of sale. The term chattel is another important uh, definition. Trade fixtures, see a lot of, of questions on trade fixtures. You will see some questions, some really challenging questions, wanting you to put that um, test to the scenario or problem that they give you wanting to know is this a fixture or is it personal property so this is a good chapter a lot of information that i think is very important for you to look at i would definitely make sure you go over trade fixtures that you're very familiar with that um, the maid acronym that we studied Remember MAID, M-A-I-D, the method of attachment. How is the personal property attached to the real estate? The adaptation to the real property. You know, a lot of times when I'm in a live course and I taught, and I taught the pre-licensed course, you know, how, is, how does it adapt to the real property? Sometimes items very well could be movable, but they are... Um, they're, they are the type of personal property that when you look at the adaptation to the real property, a water fountain that's in a circle driveway or something, that could just, through the court's eyes, intended to be real property because of how it adapts to the real estate, to the driveway. So they will look at the method of attachment, the adaptation to the real property, the intentions of the party, whether there was an a you know, what was their intent? And finally, does an agreement exist? So remember made, remember personal property, uh, real property. You're pro you will probably see a test question about, or you could, about um, a business owner who installed shelves or installed some type of um, personal property to use in their business. Do they get to keep the personal property when the lease is up? The answer is yes, they get to take that with them. And if, if they do not take that with them, remember from the course material, then that, um, that personal property, those business fixtures they attached, become the owner of the landlord or the owner of the real estate. They become the property, I should have said, it would have been a better better pick of words, they become the property of the owner. Um, and in that case, the, um, the owner gets to keep this. And remember, the, the, um, the acquiring the property from abandonment is called a session, A-C-C-E-S-S-I-O-N, a session. So very good chapter. You, got, you have lots of definitions. Really, the definitions are very important here, and I think they help you apply um, apply to the um, to the course material. Now, here's one. I'm looking implement. I'm looking at your definitions now. Implement. I've seen that question a lot on the exam. They love to have the growing crops in the field. Who actually gets to keep the property? Um, remember also. The, um, the other words for implement or a crop, um, it's in your course material. <laughs> it starts with an F. I have it right in front of me, but I was never good in pronunciation of some words, but fructus industrials. Okay, I, they took phonics out of school when I was a kid. I have been it forever taunted. I'm trying to have fun because you're studying pre-licensed real estate. And, and you might be tired, right? But that word, I'm going to make sure that's on the screen right now for you. That word that you see right below me, that make sure you understand those words because they like that the test providers 
Um, the people who write the questions like to throw those words in just to see if you're familiar. A session we talked about, you want to make sure you are good to go on that. So let's take a test question and go over this. It's going to come up on your screen and it's in your notes. Uh, an artist had a stained glass window in a hallway. Upon selling the property, the artist wanted to take the window. Can he do this? Now remember, you're going to read each question three times along with all of the answers. So answer A says, yes, it is an art object and can be taken. Hmm, an art object. Have you heard me talk about an art object? I don't think we've discussed that. So we'll put a question mark there. B, yes, as long as he made it clear before he signed the contract and got an agreement from the other party. That sounds pretty good to me. But John said I must read the question and all the answers three times. <laughs> C, no, it is a part of the real estate, cannot be taken under any circumstances. Well, we remember we have the, the acronym MADE, so there are some times that, you know, depending on if an agreement exists or the adaptation, the method of annexation. So I don't think that's a correct answer. No, as no one cannot uh, contract to remove real estate. Again, that doesn't seem very logical. So you go back through, read the question again. You're going to narrow it down to B. Now I say read the question three times. There will be times you read the question once or twice, and you can pretty much say, I know it's answer B, and that's fine. I'm just saying when you get some, to some long, very um, wordy problems with wordy answers, <laughs> lots of words, very long, sometimes they, those types of questions are, are probably your easiest questions to, um, to answer if you know what they're asking you. So you want to read those questions two or three times understand what they want you to answer. And when you follow that process, you'll do very well. And that brings up another point as we close out this review for this chapter. Because on the exam, there will be times when you will have very short, what appear to be softballs. I'll use another baseball analogy. They appear to be easy questions. And you read it one time, you jot down, you look at the answers and you say, oh, it's C. And you click C and you go on to the next question. Problem is, that question was designed to trip you up, to see if you were reading the information, if you were comprehending what they were indeed asking you. And we'll come along one of those questions, and I'm sure in one of our reviews, but I just want to caution you take your time, especially on the short, easy, what you believe to be easy questions, because they in turn could have some, uh, they could be a little challenging for you and they, they are designed to trip you up, to make you take the bait and uh, hook, line, sinker and all, fisherman's analogy, and you miss the question. And, and, and the sad part is when you go back and reread it, like if you were rereading what you missed, you would say, how did I miss that? We saw some questions, uh, actually it was uh, Monday, of this week, two days ago. I mentioned in, after the end of module one, I was at the, uh, our annual educators meeting here in Missouri, and we, we had an opportunity to look at the exam. And, and what was interesting was they would show us the exam question, we would pick the answer, and then they would show us how many people, the percentage of people who got the question right nationally and in Missouri, okay? Some questions that are so easy, and I mean the, the information's right in the book. In fact, I probably only saw two or three questions that I thought, okay, I need to really go in and change some information in my material that, to make sure you understand the concept so that you can answer those questions. But 97% of the information that he 
provided us and showed us on the screen, folks, it's in your material and it's there. It's easy to answer. But there were some of those questions where 50, only 56% of the people got the question right. And I just shook my head and thought, that's, that's in my material. I cover that so specifically. And we go over that on the review tapes. Why are people missing those questions? And I really believe it's because you're not taking the time to read the question like you should. So just to recap there, long wordy questions, answers that are have lots of words. You better read them three times. Make certain you know what they want you to answer and you'll do just fine. And those short uh, softball questions that you just want to quickly answer and move on to the next question, be careful. Those are the ones that will trip you up. Well, that's it for module two. You're going to take your review test now, and I'll see you over in the next module.